haven't talked about Stevie Nicks in a really long time. So I'm going to sit here and I'm going to tell you guys my favorite top 10 songs from Stevie Nicks with Fleetwood Mac and without Fleetwood Mac. What are you doing? <laughs> Kiki, what are you doing? Well, I'm talking about Stevie Nicks. What are you doing? Oh, you should just talk about your favorite top 10 songs from Stevie Nicks. That's what I'm doing. Now get out! Ay. Kiki Classic Rock. Kiki, and if you are new to my channel, welcome. What I like to do is talk about anything and everything classic rock. And if you are not yet subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below, as well as the notification ding dong bell. That's a that's a big ding dong. If you hit the notification bell and you get dinged, then you'll know that I put up a new video. And if you like hearing about classic rock, then this is just the place for you guys to be within the Kiki Classic Rock family. And also, if you'd be kind enough to just go ahead and hit that like button, it helps me out. And I totally appreciate it. I haven't talked about this rock goddess in so, so long. So I said, you know what? Dang nabbit, it is time to talk about Stevie Nicks. And I'm just going to tell you guys, I'm just going to lay it out on the table. My top 10 Stevie Nicks songs, both with Fleetwood Mac and without Fleetwood Mac. Who doesn't like themselves? Some Stevie Nicks. And you know what? Someday, that is one of the Steves that I am going to talk to. She's a Stevie, not a Steve. But I am really hoping and I'm praying that one day she talks to a girl can dream, right? At number 10, the first song on the list is If Anyone Falls. Now, the minute this song comes on, I feel like I am just transported right back to the 80s. Stevie co-wrote If Anyone Falls alongside Sandy Stewart, who also co-wrote the songs Nothing Ever Changes and Nightbird, which were also on the album these songs are from called The Wild Heart. This was Stevie's second solo album, which was released on June 10th of 1983 and also performing alongside Stevie was Lori Nix, Stevie's former backup singer, who was at the time married to Christopher, Stevie's brother. We all love Stevie. She's beautiful. She has the stage presence of a goddess. But she was extra captivating in this video for some reason that I just can't pinpoint. Now on Monday, May 30th of 1983, Stevie performed at the U.S. Festival that was sponsored by Steve Wozniak of Apple. If Anyone Falls peaked at number 14 on the Billboard Hot 100. At number 9, stop dragging my heart around. Well, hello, Solo Stevie. Belladonna was Stevie's very first solo album, which was released on July 8th of 1981, and this album just solidified Stevie's rock goddess being. Stop Dragging My Heart Around was the album's first single to be unleashed, and the songwriters were Mike Campbell of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers and the late and great Tom Petty. Stevie has always been open about how badly she wanted to be a part of the Heartbreakers, and we all have to wonder if Tom didn't allow that collaboration to happen because he knew Stevie would be perfection on her own, and she was. The demo of this song came out on Tom Petty's 1995 box set, Playback, and it was him singing without Stevie. And Stop Dragging My Heart Around peaked at number three on the Billboard Hot 100. Number eight, Dreams. Thunder only happens when it's raining. Simple words that make so much sense, but seriously, when Stevie sings those simple words, Words, it's just not that simple and leaves you with a whole lot of reflection. Dreams is from Fleetwood Mac's 11th album, Rumors, which was released on March 24th of 1977, and it just seems like forever ago. When the Mac recorded the Rumors album, it was a super crazy time for pretty much everyone in the band. John and Christine McVie were divorcing. Lindsay and Stevie were even just calling it quits. Even McFleetwood was divorcing his wife at the time, Jen. Boy. So rumors ironically probably started a lot of rumors in the press with everything that was going on inside of the band. Regardless, Stevie wrote Dreams. It stayed at number one on the charts for one week and has found its way back onto the charts over all of these years. Absolutely incredible. At number seven, Leather and Lace. Now Stevie also wrote this song and took two very different things, leather and lace, and seemed to find a way to connect them and made it absolute perfection. Stevie sang this song alongside founding Eagles member Don Henley, who several years ago Stevie admitted to being pregnant 
with Don's baby. Stevie and Don have both said that if they had chosen to have that baby, it would have been a girl and her name would have been Sarah. Leather and Lace was released on October 6th of 1981. Jimmy Iovine produced it. It's appeared in American Horror Story, which Stevie was a part of, and Stevie once said that Waylon Jennings asked her to write a song with this title of Leather and Lace. Coincidentally, Leather and Lace was Don Henley's first hit after being away from the Eagles, and it was Stevie's first hit after being away from Fleetwood Mac. At number six, Edge of Seventeen. Oh yeah, we've got another amazing song written by the amazing Stevie Nicks. Released on February 4th of 1982, Edge of Seventeen, from the very moment Stevie starts belting out this song until the end, you cannot help but feel her putting every inch of herself into every single word. The backstory about this song is that when Stevie first met Tom Petty's wife, Jane, Stevie asked Jane how they had both met, and Jane had said to Stevie that her and Tom met at the age of 17. To Stevie, it sounded like Jane instead said at the edge of 17. Now, for some reason, what Stevie thought she heard Jane say struck a chord and let her know that she would write a song around what she heard and she would give Jane credit for it. Edge of 17 peaked at number 11 in April of 1982. At number five is Landslide. This song is right out of Stevie's Fleetwood Mac days and Stevie once said that she wrote this song in just about five Five minutes while she was sitting in a friend's living room overlooking the Rocky Mountains. Landslide was written before her and Lindsay were a part of Fleetwood Mac and Stevie said that she wrote this back in 1973 and at the age of 27 was already tired because Stevie was working as both a waitress and cleaning lady just waiting for that musical break to, to happen. Many artists have covered this song like the Dixie Chicks and the Smashing Pumpkins and it was even part of a Budweiser commercial in the two 2013 Super Bowl. Isn't it hard to believe that Landslide only made it to number 51 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart? But think about it, 40 years later, 40 plus years later, this song is still weaving its way into all of our hearts. And honestly, this song definitely is one of her songs that should have been number one. At number four, Stand Back. In the video for Stand Back, Stevie's twirl was on fire. It was just absolutely hot. And then the dancers in that video just gave it that 80s vibe. And along with Stevie's pop sound, it, this song was incredible. There is a connection to Prince within this song, and that's just so crazy, right? In Stevie's 1991 album, Time Space, the liner notes explain the story of when Stevie was in the car with her former husband, Kim Anderson. Prince's song, Little Red Corvette, came on the radio, and Stevie had Kim immediately pull over to get some tape and a tape recorder. Yeah, remember those days? Cassettes and yeah, pushing the butt, play and record at the same time. It was tough. And she did this so she could record Prince's song, which inspired her to actually write Stand Back. Just a little over one week after the scramble to get the tape recorder to capture Little Red Corvette, Prince appeared in Stevie's studio. He listened to the song that she put together and Stevie actually split the royalties with Prince for Stand Back because she felt so obligated to him for inspiring her to write this incredibly powerful song. At number three, Rooms on Fire. Stevie co-wrote this song with Rick Knowles, whose music actually appears on over 200 million albums. That's a lot of singles. Rooms on Fire is from Stevie's fourth solo album, The Other Side of the Mirror. The album was recorded in 1988 and released on April 21st of 1989. Stevie said in 1989 that this song is about a girl who goes through life like I have gone through. The album was recorded in 1988 and released on April 21st of 1989. Stevie said in 1989 that this song is about a girl who goes through life like I have gone through, where she finally accepts the idea that there never will be these things in her life. She will never be married, she will never have children, she will never do that part of her life. This song also highlighted Stevie's relationship with Rupert Hine, producer and songwriter for artists such as Howard Jones and Tina Turner. And where the inspiration came from, Stevie once said that whenever Rupert walked into a room, it was like the room was on fire. That's hot. At number two, 
The Chain. We all know this song. This song starts off with a simple monotone beat, which then blends into just an incredible composition with all the members of Fleetwood Mac. Then more instruments come into play, it gets more powerful, and then comes right back down again, only to make you just not want to let go until you have to. Of course, the Mac as a group just makes the song as amazing as it is, but no one can deny that Stevie's recognizable sound, it just carries you away. The Chain was released on February 4th of 1977 and was written by Lindsay, Christine, Mick, John, and of course, Stevie. Everyone in the Mac has a hand in the song, but it sounds like Stevie's part included emotions from her breakup with Lindsay. Part of this original chain, Lindsay Buckingham, is no longer a part of Fleetwood Mac, but the band just continues to move onward and upward. At number one, Rhiannon. Now, if there is just one song that sticks out in my mind, one song that whenever I even say the name Stevie Nicks, this is the song that just pops into my head. She is like a cat in the dark, and then she is the darkness. Yeah, that kind of describes Stevie because when she's out there, she's there, but she's a very, very private person, just like a cat. Cats are private. My, my cat's very private. Stevie wrote this song pre-Fleetwood Mac when she was in Buckingham Nicks, and unbeknownst to Stevie, Rhiannon is actually the name of a Welsh fertility goddess and goddess of the moon. Well, that's cool because Stevie is a goddess. Perfect. Rhiannon peaked at number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100 and was on Fleetwood Mac's 10th album, Fleetwood Mac. It was the second album they released with their name in the title. It came out on July 11th of 1975 and the album as a whole hit number one on the Billboard 200. Don't you just love Rhiannon? And of course, the amazing Stevie Nicks. I really enjoy doing this type of video for you guys. If you like this format, please leave a comment down below. And you guys, just as always, really, thank you so much for hanging out. You guys have a great day, a great night, a great weekend, a great everything. And as always, remember, love Stevie Nicks and keep rocking.